Hey, Chris. Hey, Jason. How are you today? Doing good. Welcome to Leading and Serving Podcast. Episode? 24, I think. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's super exciting. It was the number on my jersey growing up. Was it? Yeah, 24 was always my number. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's good to know. Well, no, no. That means nothing, doesn't it? Right. I was like, well, I guess... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that I remember any of my jerseys. That's probably my part of my problem too. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think because the number I wanted was not available my right. freshman or sophomore year or whatever. That was the one I stuck with, and I was like, yeah, that's my favorite number now. Yeah, okay, we'll fair just enough. we'll just stick with that. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on? I don't know. I don't know why I thought of that today. Sorry about that. No, that's good. Yeah. What, what's going on with life? Hey, we're uh, you know. Life is good. Yeah. Life is good. Trying good. to tackle a couple of, you know, new things in life, not just, you know, starting a business, but um, actually started a, uh, like a peer-to-peer mentoring group. Um, we met this morning for our second time ever. That's awesome. And, Tell me about, uh, a little bit about this. Yeah. It's just a, a bunch of, um, a, a bunch. We're, we're trying to grow to a bunch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um, young leaders um, in our community who are either entrepreneurs, business owners, you know, kind of launching out. Uh, one just uh, got a promotion, became managing partner. Okay, uh, nice. You know, so we're, you know, trying to figure out this, you know, not just life, but, you know, right. how do we grow a business in, in the midst of, of this crazy world and, right. you know, life. And, and so we now, just kind of share life together and share this business. This isn't a BNI or anything like that, right? No, no, no. No, the okay. idea is not necessarily, you know, networking, lead generation kind of thing. Right. Um, I'm sure some of that will... You know, come it'll about, eventually come naturally. out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You because know, I know a guy, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, but no, the idea, like we, today we talked about what is our, what's your biggest challenge fa- that you're facing right now? Right. And, you know, we kind of tried to offer some sounding board, but also maybe a little bit of feedback of, nice. um, you know, iron sharpens iron kind of idea right. along the way. So that's, yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I just, the, 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 the BNI expectation always drove me crazy. So I, I yeah. appreciate a good group where it's, Everybody's just trying to help each other. Yeah. And we're, yeah. you know, you got solid people around you. Technically, we're not the first group in the area, right? Right. Well, you know. <laughs> you know, there's some other groups around like that. Yeah. And uh, it's not a subscription paid no. kind of thing. It's just mutual uh, mutual relationship. That's awesome. So, that's awesome. So that's cool. But, uh, yeah. Cool. So what about you? What are you guys up to? Um, you know, uh, it's spring. I'm waiting for this warm weather to break so we can... We have some outdoor projects that are coming our way that I'm trying mm, to yes. prep for um, and uh, trying to wrap up some um, some indoor projects. So we're just there you go. we're getting close to a transition where of three of our big projects are coming down to the end uh, being done. Okay. So I'm always, okay, what's coming next? Let's prep for materials. Let's prep for time management and all this good right. stuff and just trying to just trying to grow and just trying to learn from it. So um tw- i'm excited about 2022 because there's a lot of things that can happen this year mm-hmm. with a little bit of uh miracle grow on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah, you that's know, nice with the so even with the rising cost of construction materials <clears throat> you know uh, you guys are staying booked pretty good with yeah, projects and right things now like that. we are and, yeah, yep uh, that's cool there's a lot of um a lot of things that are going on out there that are still keeping um, things moving. So, uh, you know, as long as they stay moving, then we can stay moving. So absolutely. Um, we're, and, and not only that, but we're constantly helping people with problems that are, you know, popping up that, mm-hmm. um, they don't realize the magnitude of the problem. Right. So, right. and unfortunately I hate to deliver that news, but I'd much rather deliver that news and fix it right than to have to go back in six months and go, by the way, we didn't fix this right. Exactly. Cause that yeah. never feels good. So yeah, I hear you. So, yeah. So I just had to have a hard conversation yesterday with the customer and, you know, it's, I don't enjoy those hard conversations, but I will say that I know that I'm, I feel better about having them up front so that they know everything I know and they can make a decision with the information that I have. Um, and not that I know everything because I don't, but from the way I can assess the situation and with my past experience in construction, this is probably the problem. I can't promise it, but this is very right. good likelihood right. that this is the case. So, um, and like I said, I'm not perfect, but this is what I can tell you. Right, right. And I think, and I think you're, I think you're hitting on a very important thing that that honesty, that transparency, that mm-hmm. uh, that builds trust. Whether right. that's with your customer or whether it's with people on your team, when um, when you let them know, here's what I know, mm-hmm. and I here are the gaps that I don't know. Right. Um, that builds trust. When you hide, when you try and hide those things, it creates a, 
Right. You know, I don't, I don't know that I'll ever use this contractor again. I don't know that I'll right. ever go back to that business. Yeah. You know. And I don't want anybody to ever think that I deceivingly was yeah. deceptive. It's just not, yeah. not a trait I ever want to be attributed to myself. Exactly. So. Exactly. So, yeah. which kind of leans into the leadership mindset that we've been talking about for the last couple episodes. Yeah. Of, um, you know, that there are things that we do unintentionally sometimes and sometimes intentionally mm-hmm. that undermines our influence, okay. undermines our, our leadership. And those are things that we need to understand about ourselves mm-hmm. and, and, and kind of put safeguards in place so that we, we, we don't go down that road and unintentionally undermine our influence hmm. along the way. You know, we've talked a lot about five voices. Um, each of the five voices has its own, uh, what's called a weapon system mm-hmm. that, um, when you're, uh, when you're pressured, when you're when you're pushed, when maybe you're in an unhealthy, unhealthy place, burned out, you know, or any of those types of things, um, it's easier for your weapon system to come out. Uh huh. And so, you know, like for a pioneer, um, that weapon system is is expressed more like a um, uh, I've lost the word a grenade launcher. There we go. Mm-hmm. You know that you lob a grenade into the middle of the meeting or the room or into that situation, and it ex- you just explode. You yep. explode, there's shrapnel, there's damage all around. Right. And, you know, that way of communicating just can really undermine your influence. Right. Because people around you start to look and go, you know, I, I don't want to be the next victim. Right. Or, in fact, I don't even really want to be in the room because the right. shrapnel went <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and it hit everybody. <laughs> right, right. Right. You know, one of the tendencies of the creative, though, <clears throat> is similarly very destructive, but it's more like a sniper rifle. It doesn't necessarily leave shrapnel all over a room, but one person hits the floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, that creatives, you know, the creative voice can be very, uh, very pinpointed toward one person and just take them out at the knees. Mm. And they can, they can take it down and just, you know, eliminate. And, and that creates, you know, that undermines your influence as a right. leader. You know, um, connector's weapon is a uh, kind of like cyber warfare. Mm-hmm. Because connectors are all about their networks. They're all about, right. you know, hey, I know a guy, I know a person. And so if if something goes bad, your temptation as a connector is to be like, I'm going to poison the well. I'm mm-hmm. going to poison the water. I'm going to poison the network. And I'm going to make sure that that branch of the network dries up dry, and falls off. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so if somebody burns you or something happens, you know, we're going to, we're. it might not be direct. It right. all might be very indirect, but we're going to. We're going to make sure that that situation never happens again. Right. You know, and that will undermine your influence because people are like, what, maybe I'm next. Right. What, it, you know, what if I cross that person, you know? And so um, for a guardian, a guardian is an interrogator. Mm-hmm. And when they get pushed or pressed, man, the questions come out and they might be good questions, but they're delivered in a way that um, kind of comes across demeaning mm-hmm. um, or, you know, you just can't be trusted. And so I've got to ask all these questions, make sure you're on track. And man, they can they can just kind of grind someone into the ground sometimes, right. you know, through that. Um, a nurturer is uh, the one weapon that is not um, directly aggressive. Mm. A nurturer, you know, because they're a champion of, of relationships, of care. Right. Nurturers love people and they love those relationships. So and so work? their weapon is actually to withdraw. They remove their care. They're like the battlefield medic that's like, oh, you got shot in the leg? I'm going to go check on somebody else. <laughs> right. Oh, man. <laughs> when, you know, when things are good, that nurturer is going to jump right in and take, take care, care of that of person, it. right? Yeah. Um, so when you're working with a nurturer and things turn very transactional, mm-hmm. not necessarily cold, because, right. you know, nurturers have a, a hard time being cold, right. but it just kind of turns transactional and, you know, that, that warmth just isn't quite there. Mm-hmm. Um, they, you know, all of those weapon systems combined, you know, when we... As you know, when we exhibit those as part of our voicing, that can undermine our influence. Mm. And so, you know, we have to be careful of those things. We have to be careful of, you know, what are my tendencies that lead me toward those things? Right. You know, um, you know, if I'm trying to think of a good situation on the spot and I'm not doing great. So, no, you're you know, right. well, <laughs> well, and I mean, I think that the whole idea that um, each, each one of those, um, examples that you said were like spot on. Like I just, I can totally see somebody who cares about somebody and is the nurturer type who's willing to walk up to you and always take help you. And then they get burnt somehow 
and they walk up to you and be like, oh, by the way, this person burnt me. I think I need to not, I won't take as good a care. I'll, I'll be there, but I won't take as good a care as right. versus that. I can see that transaction happening with some people that yeah. I probably know and just never thought about it that way. Right. We all have like hardwired tendencies within mm-hmm. us. We all have a tendency to, to respond in a certain way. And if we don't understand the root of those tendencies, mm-hmm. if we're not self-aware to the point of going, you know, when, when that situation happened, that really pushed this button in my life mm-hmm. and my natural response creates a, an, an action and a, a consequence and a reality in my life mm-hmm. that yeah, I don't like. Mm, right. <laughs> and so I've got to, I've got to, uh, I'm never really going to rewire my tendency. Right. I'm going to want to explode. I'm going to want to be that sniper rifle or, you know, take the network down or, you know, whatever that might be, that tendency is always going to be there. But how can I shape my actions differently mm-hmm. that when I see that cropping up in my life, how can I act differently? How can I create new patterns of behavior in my mm-hmm. life so that I'm not creating a negative reality around myself? Yeah. Which when we do that, that's the reduced and I, influence. And I assume that you mean like you're asking yourself the question of like, why is this feel? Why am I starting to feel this way? Why, what am what's happening? That's making me f- go down this road of not wanting to do something or feeling like I'm attacked. Right. 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 So, yeah. So, Cause I, I know like I, I've worked with, um, there's been times where my wife has asked me as she's a guardian mm-hmm. has asked me questions and I've felt somewhat attacked, but then I quickly realized that her expectation was not to attack me, but was to help me grow. Yeah. And try to make me think through that process. Right. They're gaining clarity or they're helping to grow. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like, for example, um, you know, as a creative, the the integrity of an organization that that who we are as an organization, whether it's, you know, my work in the church or it's as a business, that who we are, our walk better match our talk. Mm-hmm. And that matters a lot to me. Mm-hmm. And when I see something in along those lines being violated... It, it would be easy for me to be triggered by that and jump out and, and just, so how do I respond in those moments? Mm. You know, mm-hmm. um, a trigger for a pioneer, for example, is um, <clears throat> incompetency or at least perceived mm-hmm. incompetence. And so, you know, like you were saying a minute ago, you, you were talking to a customer saying, well, here's what I know, right? but here's the gap in the information and there's nothing we can do about this until this gap is filled and we have to wait on other people. Right. If a pioneer is picking up that that there's a gap somewhere, but you're not being honest about that, mm-hmm. you're going to be perceived as incompetent. Right. Well, you can't you can't overcome this. Right. When you, truly you're waiting on somebody else, <laughs> mm-hmm. the pioneer is going to look at that and be like, "Forget this, we're done." And poof, there goes the grenade. Yeah. Everything's a mess. It wasn't your incompetence. Right. But that was the trigger. And so, how can a pioneer learn to? Um, you know, create different actions out of that trigger. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, um, and so each of those voices have their own triggers, each have their own response. Right. And how do we kind of, we're yeah. not going to change that tendency. Right. We're so still we going to have that same. How to navigate that. How do we navigate that? Exactly. And that's a, that's a leader who is self-aware. Right. Who is learning about themselves, understanding, okay, this is, you know, we use the five voices. That's our common language. You know, as an organization, do you have a common language around that? Right. Which you know, it is helpful. Exactly. For every organization. Exactly. Have their own language. And yeah. so a leader that's self aware, that understands these are my tendencies. Here's my natural way I want to react, mm-hmm. but I've got to grow and I've got to learn to react differently when I feel that tendency coming up. Mm-hmm. And that's. That's a lot of hard work. It is. And, you know, if we don't do that hard work, though, Leader. we're going to undermine our influence in right. the long run. And we don't Leadership want to go Leadership is not easy. That's right. So. That's right. So speaking of uh, solid leadership, we're going to, we've right. got an interview with a guy who has <laughs> achieved quite a bit of growth and yeah, tell us about our interview. Today. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the gentleman's name is Matt Simon. He has been in a, a several different businesses um, and I am looking forward to him talking with us about his, um, cause he went through some, um, growth and started a business on his own with a, a, a partner and, um, they went through a growth pattern. And so I'm looking forward for him to share that with us. This would be good. Yeah. Looking forward to this. Me too. All right. We'll be back here in just a moment with uh, Matt Simon. Sounds good. That's right. 
Jason, I want to welcome Matt to the uh, podcast. Thanks for coming today. I'm Absolutely. super excited. Welcome, man. Glad to have you. Yep. So let's let's get started. Let's tell us a little bit about. Uh, are you Indiana native? Where did you start? Where? Give us a little background on you. Yeah. So I grew up outside of St. Louis on the Illinois side, and um, it seems like a foreign country, but it's only a couple hours away. You know, four or five hours away. And I lived there until I was uh, ready to to go to college, and then I came to college in Indiana down in Evansville. And I tell people, you know, the Midwest is a great, great place to grow up. And I tell people if you take kind of the Chicago portion and you kind of carve that out and you just make that its own thing, that Illinois and Indiana could really be one continual state. I Mm. mean – when you drive through, it's corn and soybeans, you know, just like here. <laughs> just like here. And um, so it wasn't much of a transition for you to go. From no, there it to was Evansville. it was easy. And Evansville is a unique place. Not that this is an Evansville centric podcast, but Evansville is almost like its own um, sub state in and of itself. Nobody right. from hmm. Indiana knows anything about Evansville. Like people don't even realize that Evansville is a place, but it's kind of a sub region. There's, there's grippos. There there are grippos <laughs> and, and ski. Grip, grippos and <laughs> ski. Um, and ski is actually made near St. Louis or was for a long time. But yeah, ski's popular. But Evansville's a neat um, community, uh, a lot of German Catholic roots. And it's kind of, uh, it kind of is a city that feels like a town or a city that wants to be a town, even Mm -hmm. though I think it's the third largest metro. It's not a metro. I mean, it sounds dumb to say that. It's the third biggest city in Indiana. But nobody from Indianapolis even knows what corner of the state it's in. Exactly. So I will say this as a plug to their tourism community. If you need a good weekend trip, I-69 is complete now to Evansville. Go take your kids. They have a great – a great exhibit there. It's a ship from World War II that they used to build in Evansville. It's a landing ship. It was used in the invasion of Normandy, and you can take your kids on it. It's a really good trip. So the next time you're bored and it's like you don't have anything to do in the summer and your kids are driving you crazy, just drive two hours around Evansville, go see the LST, and come back. It's a great trip. Cool. Huh. Good you can fun. edit that out if you don't want it. No, it's no. too much of a shill. They're not paying me, but it's a great trip. So. <laughs> they may, <laughs> might need to start. There you go. Right? <laughs> so where are we at now? We, we went so, to college. <clears throat> so at, I went to in college Evansville. in Evansville, and then um, I graduated <clears throat> in the early 2000s and before the financial crisis, and the economy was like not amazing, but it wasn't terrible. I didn't have a ton of job offers. I looked – I, what what I, was our degree in? Yeah, my degree was in business. Okay. Um, and uh, my view on college is, you know, I think a lot of people, and this is this has started to change a little bit, but a lot of people when I was in college would just go to college and um, it was kind of uh, vapid, amorphous. They didn't really have a plan when they wanted to get done. And I just knew I wanted to do something um, – in some sort of business related field and business degrees. Mine was, I mean, it was like business administration or something. It was super general. Mm -hmm. So, um, I looked everywhere and ended up working at a small family business in Evansville and then, um, got married to my college sweetheart and we stayed in Evansville for a while, switched companies. It was, I, I worked in industrial sales. And so there's enough, um, once you get in that field, which is a great field, um, and if anybody doesn't know what to do and you're at all technically minded and all business minded, industrial sales is a great, great field. Um, I switched companies and then eventually moved within the company from Evansville to Indianapolis. And I've been here for probably close to 15 years now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm almost to the tipping point where I've spent more time in Indy than anywhere else. Mm-hmm. So certainly as a adult by far. So, yep. Right. So did, okay. So you were with that company for 15 years, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I was, so I was, let's see. So I was probably, I wasn't with them for that long. I oh, was sorry. maybe six or seven years. Six, seven so years. I worked for a small family business first, and then I worked for a large publicly traded company in sales. And I've always been in sales. So all of my sales territories, um, my first real sales job was actually, I used to sell sandwiches to gas stations. Great job. It was awesome. I did it uh, the summers 
the summer um, during one of my college summers, you know, I was around mm-hmm. 20. Mm-hmm. And all of my sales jobs have been great because I always start with nothing or something like very underdeveloped. So I, I've done this three times basically where you get a territory and they're like, you have this territory and we do this much and you need to turn this into a real territory. Nice. And some people find that overwhelming, but I was always really energized by it's it. It's kind of like a, your own little mini business then, huh? It is. Mm. And so that's actually what kind of led me, because the third time I did it for myself. And so in 2011, after working for a couple different industrial sales companies, um, myself and a business partner started an industrial fastening and gasket business in uh, the Indianapolis area. And that was kind of the third time where it was like, we started with nothing. Obviously Mm -hmm. we had, you know, we knew a few people, but I, I wasn't in that business before. Like I started the business, I started a fastener business without knowing anything about fasteners. I mean, (laughs) and that wasn't, that may sound crazy, but it, it wasn't scary for me because I had, that's what I had done at every job. I kind—I just kind of knew. You didn't have any tech, any any connection whatsoever. I mean, I, I had a va- I had a general idea, but I I just taught myself, and really, my business partner was already an expert. And so, okay. I mean, I learned very so quickly. So you knew sales, and he knew. I knew the sales, and I knew how to. Um, I knew how. I mean, our business really, in the industrial sales background that I came from, you're really. People have this conception of sales that it's like, you know, um, selling knives door to door or like selling right. used cars. And there's nothing wrong with those. Um, but the type of sales that I was in, it was somebody has a problem. They, they have a product that's not working or their supplier's not doing a good job for them. So you, you're going to solve their problem. Mm-hmm. You know, it was – there was like – like any business, there was like price matching, like, hey, I, I, I don't want to pay more than this for a product or I have to buy this better, whatever. Like that kind of stuff exists. But really what we were doing was going and solving people's problems. Mm-hmm. So it was figuring out how to add, um, how to make our section that we were supplying them, make that as painless and simple as possible <coughs> to, to where the customers knew when they gave it to us, it was going to be right. Mm-hmm. Even if they didn't know what they need, we knew what they need and we knew what they need. I mean, that was the whole business was based around as high a service level as we could provide. That's so awesome. I had a boss that used to say, um, you, you can have uh, good service, you can have good prices, or you can have good quality. But you can only usually have two. So we did our best to do all three. And in our industry, the quality was um, not negotiable. It had to be correct. Right. And we tried to give as great a service as possible and then get as, you know, get as competitive as we could. Mm-hmm. So it's funny because I saw – I think it was an Amazon truck uh, just yesterday and it was like – uh, fast and cheap, choose two. And I was like, hey, that's, you know, that's the same kind of mentality. Yeah. But right. um, so, yeah, that that was the uh, kind of the genesis for starting our own thing was <clears throat> realizing that in a lot of businesses, sales is the hardest thing. And we figured if we knew how to sell, which, again, was really solving customers' problems, mm-hmm. um, that we could figure the rest of everything out. That, you know, the all the other parts of running a business, which you have no idea about going in, you, you just got to figure them out. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't, right. you can't let whatever stop you. You just have to figure it out. Hmm. And there's a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a huge learning curve. But one of the great things about this country is that, that you know, that uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship is kind of – it's kind of hardwired into America. And, um, you know, I, I – I don't know any anywhere around the world that's a better market, that's a better place to run a business than hmm. than our country here. And we, you know, we have issues like everybody does, but um, you can really chart your own path to a large degree, and you can do it at scale. I mean, if you don't like Indiana, you can go move to fifty different states, and a lot of them are totally different from each other. So, yeah. like, right. the world is your oyster. In America, America is your oyster. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> so in the midst of 
different roles, different positions. Um, you know, you start in a fastener business, mm -hmm. not really, you're partnering with somebody who knows the business. Yeah. Expert, you know, so what expert. for you, for, for Matt Simon, what is the underlying passion that drives you in these new ventures, you know, as you, as you build a business, what is the underlying passion for you? Cause you know, cause some people would be like, I, I really want to do X because I love this product. I love this service. I want to, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, we, I look at, um, I'm, I don't know how much you guys follow Mike Rowe and I don't follow him a ton, but mm -hmm. I know a little bit of dirty um, jobs guy. What, right? yeah, yeah. Dirty yeah. jobs. I think Mark Cuban has said something akin to this as well. So <laughs> famous people kind of say this, but <laughs> none of the jobs I had when I started them, was I motivated by the job or the field itself to where like, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I need to go out and make this my whole career. Day right. one, I did not feel that way about any of them on day one. Right. But on day 1000, I felt that way about all of them. Uh -huh. And so I think, um, you know, I think there's, you have a role in what you become passionate about. And people sometimes view passion as um, kind of like love that is just like completely emotional, completely irrational. And there is, I do think there's that element to it and mm -hmm. it, it's exciting. And when you're successful or you really make somebody's day and you can have a win-win and everybody's happy. I mean, the endorphins get flowing and you're feeling good. You feel on top of the world and that's true, but you can get that feeling from doing a good job or providing a good service for people in a bunch of different fields, I feel like. And so um, for me, I just, I view those things as um, something that you have a little bit of control, how excited and how passionate. You know, one of the things my uh, business partner used to say was, you know, you're going to be at work, so, like, you might as well work. And the number of people you look around at any workplace, the number of people, and you can you can test this out when you go to a <laughs> restaurant or go to a store or whatever, you know, half the people there look like, they would rather be anywhere else than what they're, doing. what they're doing. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, everybody has bad days. Right. So I understand, mm -hmm. but they're not all having a bad day. <laughs> right. A lot of those people just maybe they have a motivation problem or whatever, but most businesses, and again, this is a great thing about our country in general, most businesses are looking for good people. Mm -hmm. Like it's mm -hmm. not rocket science. If, you, if you're passionate about what you do and apply yourself to it, you're probably gonna, you're probably gonna get more responsibility with more responsibility becomes, um, you know, that leads into more pay and more opportunities. Right. And it's mm -hmm. a cyclical thing. I mean, that's, you know, a, not all businesses, but a lot of businesses are meritocracies at the heart of it. And if you're providing a value to the business, they're going to recognize that and promote mm -hmm. you and advance you and give you more opportunities, which is in turn, more opportunities are going to lead to it's cyclical. It's just going to keep building. Right. So that's how I look at it. That's hmm. been kind of true in my experience and um, in kind of a couple different contexts, a couple different companies. That's what most businesses are looking for people who care. Mm -hmm. and right. Like it's, it's really not rocket science. <laughs> right. I, when I was younger, especially in my first real sales job after college, I spent, I mean, I would ask people who were older, like, what's the secret? Like, what's the, what's the silver bullet to, to doing this? And they mm -hmm. would all kind of laugh and be like, there isn't any. And it's sometimes it's hard at the beginning when you're doing the fundamentals and you're not seeing the results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, if you keep at it long enough, uh, you know, it usually works out from my perspective. It right. usually, you know, people that apply themselves and care, all, is there the, any, all the habits will follow them to. Is there any been a time where you did put in all the hard work and it didn't pan out? Because I mean, I think there's some growth. There's some growth in that failure in that process, or not a fa yeah. not failure per se, but you know, recognizing it didn't work and there was a reason for it too. Like, and I don't know if you've gone through that. Maybe you haven't, but I, I think that's happened a lot on a micro scale. Okay, so in um, your I'm trying to think of a good example of it, but I think that happens a lot on a daily basis. Okay, but. Um, kind of on a bigger picture, a bigger timeline, 
That's a that's a great observation. Just a perspective yeah. issue. Like, yeah, it's, it might not be as big as you think it is. It just might be just a, a blip in the radar. Yeah, I'd have I'd have to think about that and try to find a good example because I fail. I mean, like everybody else, I fail all the time. Right. But the way I look at it, I mean, we had a problem in our uh, business this morning where we just launched six weeks ago and. Um, we thought that we had this set up in a way to where this issue wouldn't happen, and it happened. And it's like, well, okay, now we got to figure out, fix the problem for this customer. Mm -hmm. And then what we really need to do is figure it out so it doesn't happen again. And right. there's only a certain amount of, um, you know, strategizing you can do in advance. Right. And some mm -hmm. of it's just getting out in I have another friend who said 80% 80% of sales is just showing up you right. know the number of people that show up once most people don't show up once and then the number of people that follow up just keeps dropping you know off. it keeps dropping yeah. off so yeah. yeah so I would say consistency is key um, and I would say that anything that you struggle with the nice thing about it is if you're able to figure out the situation, figure out how to deal with it, the next time it comes up, it's not going to be so scary. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have at least, not that everything gets fixed the same way twice, right. but it, you're going to at least have the confidence knowing that you got through it once. Mm -hmm. And you'll have at least one way that fixed things. Mm -hmm. Right. So. so you mentioned just a moment ago that you, <clears throat> you've got a new business that's mm -hmm. been up and running about six weeks. Yep. Um, so from a fastener business to, yeah. you know, catch us up from from there to yeah. So this to today. So this other business is uh, completely different. It's a um, kind of a boutique product. It's a website uh, that has we have a subscription for people who trade options on um, the S and P five hundred stock index. So okay. and this allows them to test their strategies. So it's completely different than anything I've done before. Totally, uh, totally in another direction. And I'm not a software developer. The rest of the company is all software developers. They're all software. They're all engineers, devs. They're like, they're writing the code and they're creating the product. So I'm doing the business rules that aren't writing code, basically. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, the, the legal accounting, um, the businessy side of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, helping with the customer service, and I mean that's the other thing. When you when you, I'm also a big believer when you when you're involved in a business, it helps to do every part of the business as much as you can right. um, early on. When I and I learned, I really learned this from the sandwich business. When I started the sandwich business, the first two days of the job, they were like, "You're going on a route tomorrow," and I'm like, "Okay." And they're like, you got to be here at four o'clock. And I was like, wait, what? Four? four like I was eighteen. <laughs> I got to be here at four o'clock. So in the morning. Yeah. So, um, but I went out for you know a couple days then, and I did it periodically the rest of the time to help the route driver. And it's actually you know figuring out. Okay, here's my little pad. This is what the customer needs. This is what they've ordered. Let's get the sandwiches on the truck. Put them in the tray. Make sure they're merchandised properly. Make sure they're all facing the same way. Make sure inventory gets cycled, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. When I started the fastener business, it was me and my business partner. So, like, we're selling a physical product. Fasteners are heavy. Big fasteners are very heavy. Yeah. You know, a box of fasteners is 50 pounds, and the boxes aren't that big. Right. So it's like... I don't know how many pounds of fasteners we list, we lifted in the early days, but <laughs> every fastener that went out of our shop, either he packed or I packed, and we took turns. We both did every part of the business, so right. we knew mm -hmm. where all the product was located, all of the um, all the tools were to do the job. We didn't just know where they were; we built all the tools. Yeah, so mm -hmm. and Which is huge. I, yeah, and I'm trying to do that at the business now. Um, there are customers who know who have already just taken the product and run with it and just done incredible things. And so I'm trying to make sure that I can do everything that I need to to really provide that good service. When I get mm -hmm. an email for a from a customer, a message from a customer with a question, that I know how to do it because I've done it. Mm -hmm. right. And um, there's a real popular uh, business concept. I think it was from a book called The E-Myth about it's the whole working in the business, working on the business discussion. Right. right. And um, I, I understand the principle of what they're saying. 
of that you have to spend time working to develop the business and you know the big picture you can't confuse strategy and tactics mm -hmm. but in my mind with a small business you need to be an expert at both strategy and tactics and that's hard yeah, it's yeah. Tough. Well, i think i think and you guys run businesses so you it's you hard, understand hard not to do some of that at the beginning when it's right. only you like like right. when you said when you started you and your partner like Right. The only two people that could answer the problem is you and your partner right. or, or, you know, and depending on who had the strength in it, it might more lean to one person versus the other. Mm -hmm. And so there at the end of the day, somebody's got to deal with it. Right. Right. And so it, until you can have enough revenue to bring in more people, right. you are the answer man. You are the people. Yeah. And so when a customer needs something <laughs> and you have to tell them, yes. Sometimes you say yes without knowing how to do yes. Yeah. And you say yes and then you figure it out. Right. Yeah. And again, that was kind of my that was kind of with the faster business, that was kind of our philosophy is I mean, we weren't accountants. Right. We weren't um we weren't operations managers. We weren't I mean, my partner had experience running facilities and managing a P and L, but I had none of that experience. Mm -hmm. So um you say yes, and you get the order, and then you have to commit to doing it right, figuring mm -hmm. it out, not taking shortcuts. And the thing with, um, you know, the thing with when you get when you get something that you have to work on that you don't know how to do it, the temptation to take shortcuts is is there. Totally. But what I've realized is that they're not shortcuts. Mm -hmm. You think they are. But it's better if you can build a system, build a process, make something repeatable, mm -hmm. and then the next time when it comes up, because it will probably come up again, you have a, a way to deal with it that makes sense and right. is a good use of your resources and gets it done correctly without compromising on quality and gets the customer what they need as quick as possible. Right. That's it. I mean, that's it. We're, we're in a real-time world. Everything is, you know, it's all... <laughs> Here, let, let me do this me for Google you. Know, chat, right. chat, 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 chat. And right. um, like even as I'm picking my phone, I just got, okay, this this guy just said something to me and I just got an announcement from the USPS that this package I have is shipped. And right. we right. expect <clears throat> information at our fingertips. Right. And so if your business isn't aligned to re respond quickly, that's a problem. So let's touch back. Um, let's We hit we missed a growth curve there. And uh, mm -hmm. I want to touch in the yeah. business that you had <laughs> before because sure. – you're you're no longer with that business, correct? Right. So we we sold the business. Um, and how long did you from start conception to to you end up selling? Like how long was that span? Yeah, it was eight. It was uh, it was a little over. It was about five and a half years from start to sale, and then okay. we continued to work in the business for several years after we sold it. Right. To um, help transition with the new owners, correct? Right. Okay. And that's something that was you know it was important. To us, I actually went down there a couple weeks ago. I don't, I don't see them a ton. I still have good relationships with them, mm -hmm. and my business, you know, my former business partner, we still talk every day. And for me, um, and for both of us, it was important to when we left something to leave it in like really good shape. And um, when you go through a business sale process. Um, I mean, it's a that's a that's like running a business in and of itself. But for us, it was just a lot of answering questions of yes and no, because we were just listen. We're gonna we're not gonna hide anything. We're not gonna we're gonna tell them exactly what it is. And if they're not interested, that's fine. Right. You know, because you didn't need to sell it. Yeah. You just and and so an opportunity when we as part of that, like we wanted to build something that was like that wasn't contingent on us. And this mm -hmm. goes back to the whole working in the business, working on the business. So to right. take the conversation full circle, cause I'm kind of all over the map. It was cool to go down the other week and see all these familiar faces. The same people are still working there. They've grown, mm -hmm. but like a bunch of people didn't leave and protest, you know, when mm -hmm. the new owners came in or when we left. And I think that's really healthy. I think it's, it's great that I still have a great relationship with, uh, the the guy that ran the business with me for you know we were in it for all the better part of ten years mm -hmm. and um, that was you know I think uh, if a lot of drama and and worry and and all this chaos in life you look at people who have kind of chaotic lives 
and you see them make decisions that lead to it. And for us, it was just like, we're not going to be dramatic about this. We're going to do the job the right way. Um, and it really, I think, allows you to have balance and, you know, do, when you when you do something like that and you leave it with kind of good relationships and mm-hmm. as healthy relationships um, – it's it's helpful. So when you started, you you yeah. were in another business um, as a sales, right? Right. And we worked started... for a huge company and we're working. And then a you lot. start this business. Mm-hmm. You're there for. There was quite um, a growth curve because you started with two people. And yeah. what did you sell the business with? Uh, I think we had two locations when we sold them. I think we had close <clears> to <throat> we had close to thirty. So, yeah, it was a growth curve. Um, but the other thing is time time is weird so when we were in that we when we were in that um in that season everything was so intense mm-hmm. i mean yeah, i, I like remember in the you, midst of it yeah you would come by and i probably looked like i was shell shocked every single time because i was working <laughs> like it was the most intense period of work of my life up to this point to where i would just look up from the computer and be like the deer in headlights look because it was so intense every day. Mm. And um, we were growing and our customers were growing and they were asking more of us and we were saying yes. And, you know, it's just a constant cycle of reinvesting in the business. It's hard to find good people. Um, I, you know, I feel like at the end of the day, we found good people and there's an element of luck. There's an element of culture building to that. Um, I think most of our people that we found that were good eventually came to us through references, mm-hmm. um, people that we already knew indirectly through somebody else or mm-hmm. directly ourselves. And, um, uh, you know, and again, going back to the in the business, on the business, I mean, you have to add people to scale. Right. So adding the right people is it's everything. Yeah. So that was a great – I mean, like – to go from zero to a hundred, which is, mm-hmm. I mean, for miles per hour sake, that was yeah. truly, yeah, and, at, it, at its and it core. T- it took a it took I would say, um, with that business, it took six months before we felt like we had our feet under us. And mm-hmm. I remember the first order we had, uh, a guy actually showed to pick it up showed up to pick it up at our shop, which was not most orders. That was like 2% of the orders we did. Most of them were shipped out or delivered. And uh, he showed up. It was day one. We had the product in stock. And we didn't. I didn't know how to print out a, like a packing slip for him to sign. And I just remember going, uh, "I don't know how to do this." And he's like, "Well, you better figure it out." And I'm like, "Dude, it's day one. Like, come <laughs> yeah, on, right?" But uh, we figured it out, and and um, it it is a growth curve, and it's painful. I mean, it's really condensing. You're condensing time, mm-hmm. so you're just doing something that takes a. You know, usually would. You're condensing a process that may take a week. You may condense that to two hours to mm-hmm. figuring it out, mm-hmm. and um, or something that may take a month. You have a day to do it, so you just you got to get it done. Yeah. So, um, you know, people are capable of a lot when their back is up against the wall, totally. and there's a lot of mm-hmm. people have a lot of inner strength that that doesn't get tested until you have to get tested. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, right. You know, the that's true of people as individuals and as societies, I think. You yeah. know. Looking back on that time, would you do anything different like when you started out? Man, I don't think I I mean there's there's you had a pretty good plan going into it. Yeah, we had a plan. I mean there's <clears throat> there's like technical things I would do different with like we ended up getting to the point where we basically broke our software because we were doing so much with it. You know, there's stuff like that where it was, you know, you might choose a different tool here and there. But I mean, uh, I was about 30 years old. It was before kids. And financially, we had both my business partner and I were completely aligned on how we look at finances and debt and how to grow businesses, and um, neither of we're not leveragers. Right. So you know, a lot of people start businesses, and they have 
a big loan payment from day one. Uh, right. That's just not how that's not how I roll. Mm -hmm. So I understand it's a model. Mm -hmm. There are people who do that successfully, right. but um, as far as yeah, I, I'm not a leverager, and I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any big picture things. I mean, we were pretty um, specific about like just putting ourselves in a personal situation to be in a healthy place to launch a business. Mm -hmm. So, cause it takes a lot of emotional energy, a yeah. ton of emotion. I mean, sometimes I still get tired thinking about the things that we did, wow. you know, and I don't necessarily <laughs> want to do them all again. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. That's awesome. So what would you tell all of the uh, 4 a.m. mats out there who are getting go ready to go on their first route? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think <laughs> just people are holistic. So, um, all the areas of your life will trickle into each other, whether you want them to or not. So, um, that is so true. I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, for us, it was just trying to be, you know, with a business, there's a financial component. So we had to be kind of financially healthy and in a good spot personally and all those things, um, th that will make your business life easier, mm -hmm. you know, and nobody, everybody's a working product progress. Nobody's a hundred percent, um, all the time and that's fine. But, um, you know, I see a lot of people who, um, who want to do, they want to jump ahead in the process. Mm, right. I have a lot of people, I still work, um, at our church. I'm kind of like the money guy. Like people have a money question. They go talk to Matt. That's fine. <laughs> I like that. Like I'm not right. mocking it. I like it. Right. If anybody's watching it, it's fine. You can come <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> right. And I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an expert, but they just want to hear a yeah. perspective from right. kind of somebody who's run a business, who's been there, whatever. Right. And I would say a lot of people that come talk to me, like they they want it, but they're not they're not willing to. Sacrifice. It's the showing up. Yeah, they're not. They're willing to like. They want maybe the first conversation, but they're very few of them get to the second conversation. Very few of them get to the actions, and it's like we're in a great country and have great resources to where if you invest in yourself and you invest in you know, in, in the assets this, this country has to offer and the companies in this country, mm -hmm. if you do that over a long period of time, it's probably going to work out pretty well right. for you. You're going to do well. And time is the, time is the factor. So starting early, um, and I was, I was very blessed that I, I was raised in a traditional, um, household, two sisters, mom and dad, two cats. And uh, it was it was great, you know. And a lot of the lessons I learned, the first lessons you learn at home. So I've mm -hmm. got two sons now, and I try on a daily basis to just teach them the things that not just the things that I learned because what I learned growing mm -hmm. up. There's additional things that they have to learn, conversations that we had the that you know, that I have to have with my kids that my parents didn't have to have with me. Right. right. Just because of the pace of change in the world, <laughs> the role of technology in the world. Right. right. Um, and what they're exposed to is a completely different scenario than we had growing up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, before I came here, my, my wife and I were having a conversation in the kitchen. I was making breakfast and she said, hey, our oldest son asked about this today, and this is what I told him. Just so you know, here's the conversation we had, and so we're on the same page about it. And right. it's one of those issues that's like, oh my gosh, why? Right. Like, why are we having to talk to our 11 year old about this? Like, <laughs> yeah, this yep. wasn't even in our culture 10 years ago. Like, this is a made up word. It's not a real thing. Like, all those thoughts. But I'm like, yeah, I've I've got to have that conversation yeah. with them. Absolutely. So, well. You know, I really appreciate you coming today, and I hate to cut it yeah. short, but yeah. like I am, uh, I know that you have, you do have a lot of wisdom, and I'll show up for the third conversation too, okay. just so you can. <laughs> uh, but um, for those that are out there that might be listening and might want to connect with you, sure. uh, what's uh, a good opportunity for them to reach out to you, just in case they have some questions? I or... mean, I'm just a guy in I know. Southern Indianapolis, <laughs> but. Um, uh, I mean, Do you have an email you want to throw out, or I mean, I guess you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Oh, I pretty the, much say oh, there you go. Okay. So I'm that's on LinkedIn, great um, and, uh, and that's the, probably the easiest way if okay. you want to talk about whatever. Yeah. You know. Okay. So we'll just throw your LinkedIn. On sure. There. Yeah. That's perfect. Well, and uh, if there's any uh, 
uh, numbers nerds out there. Yeah. So the business is called yeah. Option Omega. And uh, if you're interested in backtesting strategies for trading options on the S&P 500, optionomega.com. We're live. It's going great. People love it. That's yep. awesome. That's Congratulations. cool. Yeah, That's cool. Thanks. So. Very cool. Well, thanks for joining us today, yeah. Matt. Yeah. Thanks, really appreciate guys. it. Thanks, that was good. Matt. We'll be back in just a moment. Jason, that, you know, I really, uh, I really enjoyed that time with Matt and going over some of his history. He is, he is one of the few people that I know that um, have started a business and executed it very well and walked away, you know, selling it and then getting back into another business. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. he's just, it's been great to talk with him over the years and, and, and bring his information to light today, which is just super exciting. Right. Yeah. I, I was really fascinated by the fact that he's building businesses of things that he really doesn't, you know, they're products that he thinks, you know, he needs or the world needs. And he's partnering with people who are experts in that field right? and helping that come to life. And that's really cool. It is. And I, to be honest with you, I didn't know that he didn't know as much about the things that he had tackled um, in the midst of him tackling them. Like, I was like, wow, that's, that's a bigger leap than I, that, I mean, cause most of the stuff that I tackle, I know about, like right. I have some inkling of understanding of what the expectation is and stuff like that. And it's just, that's a whole nother yeah. facet. Yeah. You know I, I mean, mean? You, you can come at it from the perspective of this is me and I have to, you know, fill a hundred percent of this or it's me plus somebody else. And yeah. we can, we can fill in all that gap together. And, right. You know, and I, he, he mentioned it very briefly and, um, cause with the software solution they're working on today that, mm-hmm. he, you know, it's just been up and running six weeks. He made the comment, um, you know, we decided to build this because this was something that we wanted to use on our own. Right. And it was almost kind of a, 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 a pet project. Maybe is that what you call yeah. that? Maybe I, I was just like, you know, I know we can sell this down the road cause we're going to, and they pioneered brand new technology in a field that nobody else was doing. Right. I mean, I don't know if we got caught off that. That might've been an off the, off, the, off uh, the, you know, once okay. we stopped recording, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, he's like, you know, I think they pull data five every five minutes. Yeah, on this stuff, I mean, and the industry standard was once a day. Yeah, and they're crunching amazing amounts of data, and he's they're making it work. Right, and Which is huge. Yeah, and so that's that's really cool. And that the, is. and that's not the side that he works on. He's like, I can make this happen. Yeah. You guys code it, and I'll take care of everything. <laughs> right. He was like, I don't, I don't put the code together. I'm right. not that guy. <laughs> right. Right. But I'm, I am the business guy. I am the guy who's able to help work with this, some of these other facets of the business, right. which is, and I, I do, I do appreciate that throughout his entire story, um, in his life, he's recognized what his abilities are. And where he brings value, right? And that is huge. It's is yeah. recognizing in yourself. This is what I'm capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so that was really neat. Yeah, and he kept using the phrase, "You just got to show up." Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, whether that's in the sales process or you know when <laughs> when the business is ridiculously crazy, stressful, right? And you've got one day to figure out a month long problem, right? You know, you just show up, right? So, so yeah. Yep. That was good stuff. That was. That was good so, stuff. Glad that Matt joined us. and Yes. You know, and then after the podcast, to find out he's a guitarist. And, right. You know, and chat talk more a little about shop them. here. Yeah. There, you know, so there's <laughs> always good stuff going on in the world. You know, you never know about people. Right. You never know until you ask or you... Well, and, you know, one thing that Matt did say is that all the different parts of you will end up, you know, they all end up running together, right? Right, so right. at some level, it's neat to find out the different facets that run people through... Run, through people's lives yeah. and bring them to the place that they're at. That's right. That's so, right. That was really cool. Yeah. So, well, let's, well, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, let's put some <laughs> some of his information in the show notes, like we did. We, we talked to him. Yeah, we will. So, yeah, we'll put the we'll put his website him. and uh, LinkedIn in the show notes, so you can ca- connect with Matt there. But uh, otherwise, shoot us an email, yep. give us a like, subscribe, comment, something like that. Um, we'd love to know that you're listening. Uh, yep. If you've got some suggestions or thoughts, send them our way. Please do. We'd love to. So you guys are great. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Have a great day. See you next time.